Look at her. Look at the woman, man. Look at her. That ain't it. Okay, we about to get into some teens. Cranberry juice slaps, and if you don't drink cranberry juice, I don't know what to tell you. It's 116. Let me just dress my bowl. Hello, beautiful people. Y'all know what time it is. It's time for our mental mukbang, mukbang, whatever the girlies call it. Um. This is for August and September because by the time y'all see this, it probably won't be September. But yeah, we're just about to get into some things. I'm really going to take 20 minutes to talk about this. 20 minutes is on the clock. And we're about to get into some things. First of all, how's it really doing? Y'all doing good because my mental shot. And it's like, I wouldn't even say my mental shot. I'm just so over everything. <laughs> The first thing on the list is CAU and we can really like break it down but like I said I only put 20 minutes on the clock and by the time y'all see this probably more stuff will happen. We just gonna have to wait till the next mukbang to dissect everything. So first we can talk about the first week of orientation. So obviously y'all can see that I'm up to date with MSW Diaries episode two and three and when I tell y'all it was a whole lot of whole lot of it was a whole lot of whole lot of so that happened. Um I kind of want to get into the housing situation because I think that's funny. That housing crisis was a mess. Like, we walked in. I didn't have any furniture. I didn't have anything. It was just a mess. Like, I don't even want to talk about it, but didn't have no furniture. Didn't have anything. We moved to the luxury apartments that are like, it's eight minutes away from the school. Not even eight minutes. It's eight minutes depending on traffic. It's really like five minutes away from the school, which I'm blessed. I have my car here, but I park at a parking garage because Clark only bought 18 parking spots for the apartments that I'm living at. So it's just like, how do y'all do that? Y'all got half the school living here. Anyway, it's like a blessing in disguise because while I'm recording this today, which is September 15th yesterday, um, it was raining really badly here and our school flooded. It flooded pretty badly. Like people's dorms were like flooded. A girl got hurt. People's cars got messed up. And what's crazy is like, I was supposed to have class yesterday. I left my field placement because I have class at three. It was pouring, like it was raining so bad. I had to pull over on the side of the road and like wait it out. And by the time I was like, hey Keon, you're gonna be late for class. So you need to kind of like move it. I'm still learning downtown Atlanta because it's so much <laughs> back roads and stuff. I remember turning on this run road. I wasn't even near the school yet, but I was like, is that flood water? Girl, cars were going through it. People were turning around. I never busted a UE so quick because I don't know if y'all know if I updated y'all, but I got into a car accident. <laughs> Yes, I got into a minor car accident. Some girl, I was coming home from work and I remember telling my mama, I don't wanna do this back and forth. I need to transfer ASAP so I can be closer to where I'm staying that same night. And I stayed late to help my friend close and going home, taking the back ways. The person that hit me, she was coming over and I'm blowing my horn. I couldn't like speed up or brake because people were in front of me and behind me and it was like drizzling. She sideswiped my car. I'm on the verge having a breakdown and then this happens no at one point i thought she was gonna pull off so i like followed her i was like no we need to like pull over pulled over thank goodness it wasn't like a real like accident because the cops didn't come until like damn near an hour after that happened cars in the shop i was so over it because i'm about to start school like i can get my life back on track everything's gonna go good boom every little inconvenience in my life happens i'm ready to scream and shout the world moving to today's story i'm driving to camp and i was like you know what this is not even my car i'm not even taking this car because i take the shuttle because they do have a shuttle that comes and picks up the kids who don't have vehicles to get to the school so I, i've definitely been saving like gas and taking the shuttle and i like it because a lot of people don't ride it a lot of people be ubering to school how do y'all uber to school what jobs are y'all working? I didn't know that the school flooded until I got on Instagram because I was at a red light and I couldn't go anywhere. And I seen it, I was like, oh my gosh, that is flooded very badly. And it was in the areas where if I didn't feel like walking to my parking spot, I'll park on the side for the free parking. People who parked on the side by the houses, the apartment in the nurses' homes, their cars got flooded out. Like the water was literally on top of their car. That is crazy. So that happened. I'm still supposed to be going to school. Like I still have class. So my teacher was like, she was already on camp, but she got out just in time. She was like, nobody come to the school. Mind you, the school's not even on like no type of lockdown, no anything. 
she's like y'all don't even come here like we're gonna have class online so i was like okay bet so like i kind of waited in the parking garage because it was raining i'm so glad and god works in mysterious ways because i would have been living on campus and like who knows like what happened like that could have been my residency like that could have been my car so i'm just so glad that i didn't have to go on campus for class and i'm just glad that nobody was hurt like to the extreme because they had to bring out like the lifeboats and stuff i think that's what it's called lifesavers i don't know what it's called but they had to bring those out so that's that School has been schooling. I enjoy my classes. I'm taking research to psychopathology, working with the DSM-5, clinical practice, social work and theory, one of those classes, African-American families. Oh, and Canvas counter days because I've been locked out of Canvas so many times, y'all. Sick. Yeah, so I have African-American families, clinical social work practice and theory, um, my field practicum class, along with the field placement. We can talk about that right now. Psychopathology and research too. So everything's going good. The only class like I'm really worried about is my African Americans class because it's a lot of reading and it's an elective but it's a great professor, great conversations but they want us to read so much pages like we got like three textbooks and y'all want us to read like 30 plus chapters, 30 plus pages. I'm like how do I retain any of this information? That's something that I gotta figure out but my internship, let's talk about that. I'll probably talk more about it like when I do like a day in the life I record one but I'm not liking it so far. I'm doing it through a third party, school social work, not even school social work. I'm a mental health based intern. I work in the school, so it's just a lot y'all. Our training was very bad. It was very overwhelming. I'm talking to five different organizations for this one little grant. It's just very overwhelming and confusing. I have so much stuff, I haven't had any clients. So it's like, what am I doing? I wanna switch out, I really do, because like I've been vocal, like vocally saying like, I don't feel comfortable, I haven't been trained right. This is just a waiting game, like we have not done anything. Like I feel like I'm wasting time when I could be stressing over working and knowing that I'm doing something versus stressing and I'm not doing anything. So I had a few conversations with people and they were just saying like, we don't know what's going on. We don't know, we don't know, we'll get back to you. Baby, I've been with this agency for a month and I've been working at the school for two, two weeks. Y'all still saying the same thing. I don't know y'all. And I know I really can't talk about it because it's social work. And you know, it's social work, very confident you. But I just wanna let y'all know, I can't stress nothing that I can't control. My thing is, I've done my part. I played my part. I did my role. It's time to get up out of there. I can't. I've done everything in my power. The first semester is about to be over. Got September, October, and November. And then December, I finished with the first half. Baby, what am I doing? I have not done anything yet. And then speaking with my supervisor, they're like, well, it's gonna take some time. You're just gonna have to like wait it out. Wait it out? Uh-uh. And it's like, I, I wanna stick with it because it's paid. I wanna stick with it because I'm working in the schools, but this ain't it. Like, I really don't know, like, <laughs> it's like, I can't be a sitting duck because I know how I get. <laughs> and I know for me personally, like, I need guidance. I've learned at 23 years old that I need, I need some type of guidance in my life because I just can't free ball anything. So, I'm sorry, y'all probably like, girl, this mukbang not even hitting on nothing. I'm just giving y'all my honest feels towards life. Maybe I can go into depth with my mental, but I'm just tired. <laughs> like, I'm to the point where it's just like, everything's becoming numb. Y'all probably like, girl, you put on like a different light in front of the camera, but it's just like, I try to stay positive for the people that are watching. I try to stay positive for the people who check in on a regular and who know me. Like, if they're going through it, I'm the one that's, you know, picking them up. You know, like, you never really check on the person that does the checking up on. So, I don't know. I just, this is my raw emotion, y'all. <laughs> mm. And I keep saying I don't know. And it's like, I know, but it's like, it's hard to talk about it. It's easier said than done, too. So, it's like... I just want to get to the point in my life where it's like, you worked this hard, now you can play hard. Like, you did all this, you you left your legacy, it's time to relax, it's time to travel, it's time to do all that. But I figure when I graduate, I definitely want to travel because this internship is kind of having me second-guessing social work. But I had a speaking engagement last night. I talked on this panel, I talked about the student side of mental health and just like the comments that I got and like all the feedback. And it's just like, I do know my purpose. And right now, the feeling that I'm feeling is temporary. Like, this is not how i see myself living like this is just the beginning stages of finding out like who kiana wants to be what kiana likes what kiana doesn't like this is like the beginning stages and i just want to get to the point where i'm just making money i'm happy and i'm just in love with myself but 
I'm used to a routine and we can talk about that too. Like I'm used to a routine. I'm used to, uh, my plan is not out cause I literally just threw my bag on the floor, but I can show y'all like I have timestamps of everything that I'm supposed to be doing. And it's like, if I don't follow it, I'm a screw up. I beat myself up. If I'm behind on something, you know, it's the same thing. Like, and just how I got into that car accident, just how I had to like up and move from the school to come here. And then like how with my internship, like it's not hitting on nothing. Like the orientation, it's, every slight inconvenience throws me off and i hold a lot of stuff in because i don't talk about it and it's like every time the littlest thing happens i crash like i mentally break down because i'm worried about stuff that i should have properly grieved with or probably not even grieved like stuff that i should have handled mentally three months ago you know what i'm saying so i haven't really talked to my family about it because it's just a lot and i know they got their lives of their own but that's just like a lot on one person but i'm working through it today was my i took a mental health day I could not go into the school. I'm sorry. I just had to take a mental health day because there was a lot going on. And I wanted to go on campus, find me a counselor so I could talk to somebody. I wanted to get stuff just straightened out. I wanted to go to the library to like just decompress. Couldn't do that because of the flood. So I've just been here. I'm recording this video because I've been procrastinating on this. And I want to get back into doing the things that I love. And I'm my biggest critic because I've been telling myself and like even when I look at the camera because the camera sits on my um t by my TV. And it's just like why did I even get that camera? Like I'm not even putting out content. I like putting out content. I just need to stop being scary and caring what other people think because somebody really might need this. So I don't know who needs to hear this but I'm proud of you and continue to push. This ain't easy. <laughs> it's really not but time's up it's really not but if you continue to push and you believe in yourself and you've done the best that you could you're a winner like don't it don't even matter what other people think it's your life i can attest to that because i'm just going through it i'm really finna lose my mother medulla <laughs> but it's it's life and you gotta really sit down and think like how is this gonna make me happy in the long run like is this gonna affect me five years from now heck for me is this gonna even affect me five minutes from now calm down just chill and i'm i'm still learning that. like i could preach to the choir but i gotta be my own preacher like i have to listen to the preacher's words so that's why today i said i'm gonna get up make my list and just chill inside i got chipotle i got my comfort food recording a video for y'all like i'm trying to do the things that i love to remember like why am i here i said the month of october i'm gonna be focusing more on making content like making tiktoks making youtube videos just kind of starting somewhere so i can grow my audience so i can grow my channel because i really want to do youtube i really do you know i just gotta like maneuver with that and come october it's homecoming season i'm going up so y'all be ready for those vlogs i'm gonna live life like what chris Brown said i'm gonna live life like it's my last <laughs> Not finna care what nobody says. I'm shoving this camera in your face. You better turn up one good time. We are going up, babes. Okay. <laughs> my timer did go off, but I know with these mukbangs, I kind of just give y'all my honest reaction. Or like I'll sit down and answer questions, but I'm just not in the headspace to like sit down and pick the funk with y'all. But it's also like I'm just, this is the real me. Like this is how I'm feeling. I feel overwhelmed. I feel stressed out, but I'm to the point where it's like I can't control anything. I'm taking it day by day and whatever happens, happens. Like I'm putting my foot down. Like I'm about to go into this meeting with my field placement director. I'm ready to switch out. Like I've done my part. I've been here for a month. Nothing's working out. And it's like I don't even want to stick around to continue to wait and nothing happens. So I don't know, y'all. And one thing about me, I don't give up easily. So that's kind of also in the back of my head. I don't give up easily. I'm willing to stick things out, but this has been a roller coaster. It's been a roller coaster. It's been overwhelming. It's been stressful. Like I'm stressing about this internship more than I'm worried about class. And that's a problem because school comes first. But overall, my mental, it's not bad. It's not horrible, but it's its just in the middle. We're just going with the flow at this point. But I just want to say, I know that I don't want this video to be long because I'm just giving y'all my honest opinion on things. I just want to say, y'all got it. Keep pushing through. And if you need somebody to talk to, obviously I'm here. DM me. You got my socials. If you know me, you got my number. I don't know. I'm just, I'm just here to help, to be honest. I'm, I'm just a guru. Like at this point, I'm pushing people and my problems like how Santana pushed that man. <laughs> Thank y'all so much for watching this long overdue mental mukbang. Um, I will be back. And I'll be back October when I'm doing a detox <laughs> at the end of the month. Stay tuned because the content is coming back. I've been slacking. So yeah, I love y'all. I'm super proud of y'all. Take y'all's mental serious and it's gonna get better. I can't make any promises, but continue to advocate for yourself. Continue to fight for yourself. You're gonna be good. Thank you beautiful people so much for watching. 
and I'll see y'all in the next mukbang. Stay tuned for the upcoming vlogs too because we're back on track, babes. All right, peace out, sweeties.